Today we are going to learn about stationary points on a curve. The National Five Essential Skills are Factorising and Substitution. Stationary points. Some points on a curve are neither increasing or decreasing but are stationary. These are called turning points on the graph and you would have visited these during National Five when we looked at quadratics. This means that the gradient of the tangent to the curve is zero at a turning point and we can find the coordinates of the turning points by solving the derivative of the curve's equation equal to zero. There are four possible turning points. We have a maximum turning point, a minimum turning point, a rising point of inflection and a falling point of inflection. Example 1. Find the stationary points and determine their nature for the graph of fx equals 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. Again, we will split our page in two. On the left hand side, we'll work with our derivative and the right hand side our original function. f dashed x becomes 6x squared minus 18x plus 12. It is very important that we write down in our working for stationary points, we need to let f dashed x equal zero. And if this is not done in the exam, you could lose a mark. We set our derivative equal to zero. And then to find our x coordinates of our stationary points, we must now factorize. Take out a common factor first. We'll be left with x squared minus 3x plus 2, which will then factorise to give x minus 1 and x minus 2. If we set each bracket equal to 0 and rearrange, we get x is 1 or x is 2. Therefore, we have a stationary point when x is 1 and we have a stationary point when x is 2. We now need to investigate whether these points are maximum, minimum or points of inflection. To do this, what we do is we find our second derivative. So we take our derived function, 6x squared minus 18x plus 12, and we need to differentiate again. So this will give an answer of 12x minus 18 for our second derivative. To find out what kind of turning point we have when x is 1, we put x is 1 into our second derivative and here we can see we get an answer of negative 6. As it is negative, with that then lets us know that we have a maximum turning point. And the same thing again, we need to put x is 2 into our second derivative and we get an answer this time of positive 6. And since we have a positive value, we can see that when x is 2, this is a minimum turning point. Now that we know we have a maximum turning point when x is 1, a minimum turning point when x is 2, the last step is to obtain our y coordinates. So when x is 1, we put 1 into our original equation. 2 times 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1 plus 4. This will give 2 minus 9 plus 12 plus 4 and an answer of 9, giving a coordinate point of 1, 9. When x is 2, again we insert this into our function. We get a y coordinate out as 16 minus 36 plus 24 plus 4, which is 8. So when x is 2, y is 8. The very last step is we need to clearly state our turning points and their nature. So we have a maximum turning point at 1, 9 and a minimum turning point at 2, 8. Example 2. A curve has equation y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4. Find the stationary points and determine their nature. First step, we will split our page in two, derivative on the left hand side and the original curve on the right. Finding our derivative, we get an answer of 3x squared minus 12x 
plus nine. In order to find our stationary points, we need to set our derivative equal to zero. So 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0. In order to find the x-coordinates, we factorise. First of all, we'll take a common factor out of 3 to leave x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0, which will give x minus 1 and x minus 3 in brackets. Setting each bracket equal to 0 gives x is 1 or x is 3. Again, we need to find the nature of these stationary points, and to do that, we need to use our second derivative. So d2y over dx squared is equal to 6x minus 12, and this is found by differentiating 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. We then need to insert x as 1 into our second derivative, and when we do this, we get a negative answer out, we get negative 6. Therefore, that indicates that when x is 1, we have a maximum turning point. And we need to do the same again for when x is 3. When we put 3 into our second derivative, we get a positive answer out, we get positive 6. Therefore, we have a minimum turning point. Next step is to obtain our y coordinates. So when x is 1, y equals 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 minus 4, which is 1 minus 6 plus 9 minus 4, which is 0. So we have a coordinate of 1, 0. When x is 3, that will give y equals 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 minus 4. 27 minus 54 plus 27 minus 4 is equal to minus 4, so a coordinate point of 3 minus 4. The very last step is stating the coordinate points of the stationary points and their nature. So we have a maximum turning point at 1, 0, and we have a minimum turning point at 3 minus 4. Now try these examples on your own. Please pause the video. The answers for A, we have a minimum turning point at 1 minus 1, and we only have one turning point because we have a quadratic function. For B, the minimum turning point is at 0, 0, and we have a maximum turning point at 2, 4. Please self-assess your progress. For extra work, try page 106, exercise 6M, questions 1 to 9. So what have we learned today? Today we've been finding stationary points in the curve. The key steps are differentiate the curve's equation and set the derivative equal to zero. Factorise and solve to find our x coordinates. We need to find our second derivative and insert x to determine the nature of our stationary points. We substitute the x coordinate into the curve's equation to obtain y and we state the coordinate points of our stationary points and their nature.